Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekah HaKadosh. Double honor to the true leaders of the nation of Israel in these last days, Great Millstone, also known as GMS. Salutation to the Most High's men in the four corners of the earth, pushed in his words, sincerity, and truth. And Shalom to the sisters that support and subscribe wholeheartedly to the message of deliverance and salvation of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. That's your brother, Pan Yum Yum from GMS, Mississippi. With the topic going into the service and prophets will be known in the kingdom. We're going to start here in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, and verse 19. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in the land where they have been put to shame. You know, and who's that her? It's talking about the nation of Israel, but ultimately the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be redeemed, which is that remnant are going to be redeemed from the land of their captivity. And they are going to be made as a wholesome and beautiful bride that is adorned to her bridegroom. And in, in this case, the nation of Israel, the elect of the nation of Israel being made perfect to be presented before the Lord, Yahweh Shai. And the Lord, the Heavenly Father stated, you know, through the prophet Zephaniah, that he was going to gather the elect of the nation of, the, of Israel from the four corners of the, of the earth. And along with that, it was going to give them fame in the lands where they were put to shame. And it's also in the book, book of Wisdom of Solomon, where it goes into how the heathen shall be amazed with the strangeness of our salvation. You know, because they're going to see individuals being taken up into the heavens, you know, because we've been under the impression that there's going to be this great rapture and this earth, this this grandeur large earth mass with soil and grass and flowers things of the nature on it and all nations of people are going to float up into the air and float around and ride on that floating soil you know that's been the misconception that has been taught which is this so-called rapture the rapture is not going to take place the only rapture is going to be is when you look at how the lord ascended up into the heavens that's how the elect is going to be saved from this destruction that is for to come. You know, and the Heavenly Father is going to make it a, a, a great salvation. And that's why, you know, the angel had to ask those that were on looking, you know, why ye men of Galilee stand here gazing into the heavens? You know, because that same Lord that ascended up, he's going to come in that same fashion, right? Riding upon what we would call a UFO. But the scriptures also call them riding upon a cloud. Verse 20, it says, At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, said the Lord. You know, and that proves that we are still what yet this day in our captivity, you know, pursuant to the book of Baruch. You know, when the Heavenly Father has put us to shame, has made us a proverb and a byword, and ultimately placed us un underneath these curses, which we cannot turn back. But only the Heavenly Father who placed us into captivity can return this captivity. And he said he's going to do it before our eyes. And he's going to make a, a, a speedily, speedy, speedy riddance of this current life. The only thing that the Heavenly Father is requiring of us is to endure unto the end. You know, being able to last because as it is written, be ye still and know that I am Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Now let's get the book of First Corinthians, chapter seven. I'm going to start here in verse 20, 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Meaning what? That the heavenly Father is looking for you to have your eyes single. And no matter what situation, circumstance, or state that you're in, your eye has to always be kingdom-minded because the Heavenly Father is going to give us praise and fame in the land where we will put the shame. You know, people talk about you. They talk about the way you look, talk about the way you dress, especially these so-called Israelites. You know, these are some of the most hateful individuals on the face of the planet. The Heavenly Father will have a heathen, a wicked heathen individual show you more love and more kindness than your own fellow brethren or sister 
like like the people of of our nation. That's why the prophets of old just just flat out just put curses on you because you are hard headed and stiff necked to the particular point in fashion that you you don't even desire to have understanding. That's why the scripture says that for amongst my people are found wicked men. All you do is lay snares and stumbling blocks before your fellow kind while we watch all these other heathen nations round about, about us take care of one another. You know, we are have become a, a, a people of, of straight degenerates. You know, but it's okay. Let's get the book of 2 Kings. And we're going to read chapter 2. In verse 24, it says that he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the, in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel and from thence he returned to Samaria. Now, why did that happen? Now, let's jump up a verse. Verse 23. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. Just as I said, people talk about the way we look, talk about the way we dress, talk about the way we speak, talk about the way we conduct ourselves because we run it not to the same excess of ride as they do. So therefore, they think it's strange and all, all because they cannot understand that marvelous, marvelous light that we walk in. You know, we can't even fully understand that marvelous, marvelous light that we walk in. We just understand that it's inspired by the spirit of the Lord. And if you are envious of that particular light, how about you just be desirous to be adjoined unto that marvelous light? Because it is a beautiful place to be, to be under the umbrella of, of protection of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, to dwell in the house of understanding. Why wouldn't you want that? But the Heavenly Father created to where not every man and not every woman was going to get it in this life. He created a lot of a lot of individuals, a lot of your family members. He created them in vain to do what? To ultimately destroy them by death, by pain. And you hear little monsters that are mocking the elderly, You're not respecting their elders. You got little monsters in the nation of Israel right now, not respecting their elders, not respecting their fellow brethren. The scripture said that 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 that, that love worketh no no ill to his neighbor, backbiting, name calling, which is childish as hell. You got people still in this in today's time talking about you. Oh, you a bum. You a bum. We're all bums. We are all bums. We don't have a land to call our own. We don't have a heritage that we can claim. We don't own any natural resources on the earth. We don't own any major corporations. We're not sitting at the, 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 the table of decision makers in no country or continent. All the clothing that we purchase, we purchase it from another. We don't have any fields where we're out there growing cotton and growing crops and we are actually being producers in the earth. We are through. We are a through people. But the crabs in the bucket, look at another crab. Oh, he's getting to the top. Let me go up and yank on his leg. Let me rock the, 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 the bucket a little bit so he can come right back down. And that's why that great judgment is not going to be one that is going to be remorsed, you know, because at the end of the day, the righteous are praying to be redeemed from that great judgment. And all of you individuals who are of prideful minds, that's one of the things that the Lord hate. And we're commanded to be, be like the Lord himself. So. When it comes to pride, nobody has mercy or has pity upon a prideful individual. When that judgment cometh in whatever shape, form or fashion that it comes, nobody's going to pity the charmer that is bitten of the serpent. This is the book of Romans, chapter 14 and verse five. It says one man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. 
Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind, because we know what we're supposed to do. The scripture says, he that know to do good and do it did not to him it is sin. You know what the scripture talk, talk about with a man having his head covered as he's prophesying and praying? You know the scriptures reference when it says that a woman's head is, uh, hair is her glory and she that prayeth with her head uncovered? We understand what these things mean, but yet we'll still make, make a loophole for ourselves. We understand what the scriptures talk about when it says thou shalt not commit adultery with thy, uh, uh, with thy brother's wife, with thy neighbor. But it's still your decision whether or not you're going to slide up in there and do what you do. We know what the scriptures plainly mean when it says thou shalt not steal. And you see your brother has some money sitting around or some jewelry sitting around or whatever it whatever tangible thing or non-tangible thing it may be and you take hold of it you seize it in private no one else knows about it but you've laid your hands upon another's goods see we all know the difference between right and wrong but we're just faced with the opportunity to make a decision on which avenue we would like to choose and at the end of the day it's not up for debate it's not up to negotiate. The scriptures say what they say, and they don't say what they don't say. We don't add unto it, neither do we take anything away from it. So at the end of the day, the scripture says that every way of man is right in his own eyes. So let you be fully persuaded in one way or another. Because there's going to be a group of individuals who aren't going to sway. They're not going to be folded. And they're not going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. They're not going to be easily manipulated or, or persuaded because this why because the scriptures say what they say do you do you do whatever the hell you want to do but just understand that even if you don't believe in judgment there's always a consequence to our actions now let's get the book of colossians chapter 2 and we're going to read here in verse 16 it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Yahweh Shah. And we understand that the Lord came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And we also understand that we are under grace and under mercy. So it's not all about the law, law, law. But do we make null and void the law? No, we do to, our, to the best of our ability to keep the law. And if you're doing something to the contrary of that, then you'll be reminded of, okay, this is what the law says. You know, but executing judgment upon you and different things of that nature, look, you know what's supposed to be done. Heavenly Father gave us the law, statutes, and commandments for a reason. The first part of knowing that you're an Israelite is, is knowing that you have a standard to go by. You have a standard to live by. So nobody, man, nobody got time to be going back to the basics with you. Okay, this is the first commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord. Like, no. At this point, you just teach this to the children. You teach that teach, teach that to your kids. You teach them the Lord's Prayer. But you grown individuals out there who are willingly rebellious, you know, we understand that 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 that, that spirit of rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, man. You know, witches in the ancient time were burned, man. Burned like a bundle of sticks. Let's get uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And the fear of the Lord keeps you humble. The fear of the Lord keeps you fearful. It keeps you afraid of, of, of being judged or someone that you love or you care about being judged or being you know what I'm saying? Jacked up from your actions. Jacked up from something that you've done, a situation that you've got them in. But it's all about working out your own salvation with that fear and with that trembling. It says, for it is of Yahweh which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Because ultimately the Heavenly Father's good pleasure is to give you a reward for your righteous works. And it's also of his good pleasure, yet his disappointment, to give you a reward for your wicked works. Now, if we simply just did what the Lord required of us without any strife, contention, rebuttal, 
you know, and you know, who knows how much the Lord will bless you until he, until he sends his only begotten son. Let's get the book of Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. You know, the spirit right, rounded right back unto what? The servants and the prophets will be known in the kingdom. Why? Because they're going to get that fame in the land where the Heavenly Father actually put them to shame. Because he made them a, 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 uh, a spectacle unto the world. But you have to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Meaning that you have to tread carefully with the speech of your mouth, with the things you say with your tongue, and also with your particular actions and the things that you conduct in your body and with your own hands. Now let's get the book of John chap uh, chapter 6. And this is going to be down in verse 44, it says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And that's what we glory in. You know, that, that that's going to be our glory because, you, you know, we're in a low a state right now. We're in a low condition, low position. Hated by the heathen, right? The heathen have their feet upon our necks. The heathen are the head and we are the tail. And yet hated by our own so-called brothers, our own so-called kindred. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to finish here in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 6, verse 10. For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Until next time, I say shalom.